a very quiet theater, as you were also very. intensely engaged on the film. I love that. Um, Love Song was financed by Game Changer Films, which is focused on female directed content. And the film is recently acquired by Strand Releasing. Do you have a release date yet? Um, Strand's going to do the new release in February, and Netflix is going to release it immediately on their platform in March. Great, congratulations. So this was a family affair. Your husband, Bradley Russ Gray, was the co-writer, producer, and editor, is that right? And both of your daughters are in the film. Yes. So tell us about what that's like, working with your family. How did, how did that work? <laughs> um, well, I've, I've worked with children before, and I have to say, don't work with your own kids, because it was so challenging. Um, of course, it's joyful at the end, but I mean, it was tough. <laughs> well, they were absolutely adorable. Real fun. So, um, when you look at your, your debut feature film that won the Grand Jury Prize at Sundance, um, to this film today and the work that you're doing with Transparent and Queen Sugar, which if you're not watching, you should be. Um, you must be very proud of the, the trajectory. Um, I'm curious what stories um, you still want to tell that you haven't told yet. Um, I'm working on a film about a uh, mother who lost aging and she's in her 70s with three kids who are grown up and I'm interested in her journey um, you know thus far and reflection and also going forward I think that's really interesting to me um, I don't know I am really interested in family dynamics and particularly individual within the family dynamics you know and um, individual identity and how you define yourself at different stages in your life um, so, you know, that's, that's what I'm thinking about at the moment, but um, if something much bigger than that and scope comes along, I'd love to explore that as well. Okay. Now, you've worked with both of these actresses before. How do their styles differ? Uh, okay. um, yeah, so Jenna was in my film, Poor Ellen, um, and then Riley Q was in Brad's film. I am, so I met her when she was 19, and then she was in a short film that I did for Miu Miu. So I feel like I have a long friendship and relationship with them. So by the time Love Song um, came along, I just kind of felt like I'd call some friends that I could call on to see if they're available for a week, you know, to explore something. So Love Song originally started as a short film. And I wanted to try something new at that point because I was trying to get this other film off the ground. It was very challenging for me. So I wanted to do something more like in, in between days, which was kind of impulsive and, and you know, shot on video. And let's just make something feeling, you know? So um, Jenna is extremely experienced and precise, technical, as well as emotional actor. Um, she could do very minute adjustments in her scenes um, and Riley is she's like completely consuming the actress so she comes she's already Sarah and I don't you know it's it's kind of like she lives that person so they're very different technically but they had fantastic chemistry together you know they're both very professional and experienced actors in, that, in their own way so it was a pleasure to work with them I think the whole room just fell in love with Rachel. <laughs> Let's have some questions for the audience. From the audience here. Raise your hand if you have a question. Yes, in the back. Was it mostly improvisational? Um, I had a scripted, which was half scripted and half treatment for both part one and part two. And a lot of times I felt like what they did on set, um, improvisation was a lot better. They took it off the page and they took it someplace. A lot of those kids I did not write. Um, <laughs> so um, a lot of their personalities came in, I think, when they were improvising, and they were so amazing at it. So it ended up being that a lot of their dialogue is actually what they came up with. Thank you. Thank you. 
That's great that you had so much trust in them. Oh yeah, I think, um, yeah, it was a pleasure, yeah, for sure. Okay, back to the audience. Let's see, what else do you want to know about this beautiful film? Yes. I would like to know something that um, isn't even brought up much in Q&As, but you would love for us to know about your film. Something special to hear your heart. About this film or yeah. filmmaking in general? This film. Oh. Um, yeah, I think what Lucy was talking about initially was my first film, which was In Between Days. And for me, when I worked on that film, was um, I shot a bunch of footage, like 60 hours of footage on video back in 2005. And um, what my husband Brad and I agreed to was that it could be an experimental film or it could be a short film. It didn't have to be a feature length narrative film. So I felt like I had this great freedom to explore, and it took a year to edit that. So when I was working on Love Song, I wanted to go back to that feeling and excitement of finding and discovering something. So I tried to leave any sort of preconceived notion of narrative film behind, because I was feeling like I was getting stuck in that. So for me, Love Song is kind of going back to that, to discover something new, and also allow my actors and people who are participating in filmmaking to feel like they're creative partners with me. Let's talk about the ending for a moment. Um, I think that, am I right in thinking that you had written an alternate ending? Well, yeah. Well, it was actually two endings. Part two I wrote it with Brad together. So he wrote a happy ending and I wrote the existing ending in the film. <laughs> So we shot both endings and we edited the film together and then initially we put the happy ending at the end and showed it to the financiers and the producers and they watched the film and they all said, that doesn't feel right. Like, great! So we go to my ending and then that ending. It's nice that your husband is so romantic that so he wrote that. Yeah, yeah, no. I think that says a lot about our relationship too. <laughs> Questions from the audience. Yes, right here. The character that most intrigued me in this was Mindy's mom. Yeah. Um, can you talk a little bit more about her character and if she was trying to take something out of her whenever she was talking? And <coughs> was yeah. Um, what was the question? Sorry. Oh, Mindy, about Mindy's, Mindy's mom. And what her background story is? Sure, what her, what her, what her motives were in being so... Um, <laughs> Yeah, I, I, yeah, I think Mindy's mom is kind of inspired by my mom, but I mean not directly. She's not like that, but she has said to me many times, like, "What's wrong with your face?" So I thought, but not in the context of like the morning of wedding per se. You know, throughout my life, in different situations. She was, What's wrong with your face? So, um, but I just put that line in there for the breakfast in the morning. I thought it was appropriate. Um, I, know, I think there are different types of moms, and Mindy's mom, she is who she is, and I think you could see precisely where Mindy might be coming from with the mom, like that, at that moment in her life. Um, I just wanted, I didn't want her to take over the story, but I just wanted enough backstory on Mindy to give you a sense of who she might be. Like, give her a bigger picture of Mindy. Um, yeah, and her mom is, you know, Mindy's from a uh, kind of upper class <coughs> family, you could tell by her mom, and Mindy has a very alternative lifestyle, and, and yeah, so it's just a contrast of what Mindy's mom wants from Mindy versus what Mindy wants in her life. Well, now we have to know whether your mom's seen the film and whether she recognized that line. <laughs> I'm sure she would. <laughs> she, would say, she would say the same thing. <laughs> there was a question in the middle here. Yes, go ahead. Okay? Yeah. Despite the difficulty of working with your daughters, they were fantastic. Thank you, I'll tell them. How do you think that your young 
youngest one engaged <clears throat> into all this, and did she understand what was going on? No, I think what we told her was that Riley was her fake mom, pretend mom, so still Riley's name to this day is pretend mom. <laughs> so, um, she's just really comfortable with strangers and people, and she will climb on your legs and just sit there and grab, you know, strangers' hands and walk with them. <laughs> it's like that. And she, she's just been like that since she was born, actually. She didn't feel anything different. <laughs> we have a question right here. Yes. I thought that this movie was fantastic, and I thought it was extraordinary because it had what, to me, was a bisexual plot. And while, because it was LGBT film festival, I assumed that it was a love story, and at the end the girls would run off and live happily ever after. And the fact that they declared their love for each other and yet did what they thought was the right thing, and that beautiful scene at the end when the other woman takes the little girl's hand, it was, it was just so, so, you did such a wonderful job, thank you.